Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, I want to get into end-to-end -end testing, what end-to-end -end testing is, how you can get started with it, and why this is one of the most important skills you should have as a developer. Let's go. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So in our earlier video on testing in general, we discussed different type of testing, unit testing, end-to-end -end testing, integration testing, and so on. But I do believe end-to-end -end testing for web applications is one of the most important parts and the most important thing you should have in your app because it allows you to mimic an end user and see how they would run through your app and see if there are any bugs. So let's define end-to-end -end testing in a bit more verbose way. So if you have a computer, if you have a website where you have certain buttons and certain elements, in our case, for example, we have Codam Playground, which we want to test, what we can do is we can write certain end-to-end -end test for this and link it to our deployment pipeline. What does this mean? It means that after our code is built, every single time this suite of tests would run and they would run it into multiple browsers, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and so on. Now, why does this happen? This happens because you can configure a single script to tell what it has to do as a user on a web page, this script right here would spin these browsers and it will perform those actions programmatically and it will assert certain things. For example, let's say on your website, you have a link alongside your logo, which should have the text as login. And when you click on this link, it should take you on the login page. Then you can programmatically write it and it's gonna run all of these assertions on all the browsers, all the browsers which you configure and will detect if the path is changed to login or not, again, depending on what you wrote in the script. Now you might be thinking that this is basically useless, but think about this when you're trying to design a flow, a user flow in your website. The first time user might not go to login page. So you might design a flow where you want that no piece in the user flow is ever broken. So you might design a user journey where the first time user lands, they go to register, they fill up their details, then they are redirected to onboarding. Maybe over here, they skip the onboarding in one scenario and they fill the onboarding in another scenario. And in both the cases, then they are finally redirected to the dashboard. Now, this is just a single user flow. Now, obviously you would have a lot of different components over here in terms of code and pages, but what you want is a peace of mind that whenever you make any change over here or here, or here, or here, or here, or here, that particular change does not break this particular flow. So you can write the test for this particular flow one as an end-to-end -end test, and it'll automatically run every single time without you being testing this flow over and over again after every single change. So this saves a lot of developer bandwidth. It saves a lot of mental headache because you don't have to worry about anything breaking because if anything breaks, your test would report it. So this is the reason you need end-to-end -end testing, especially in web applications. All right, so how do we get started with end-to-end -end testing? Well, currently at this point, I support two ways of learning end-to-end -end testing. The first one is Cypress, which you probably have already heard from me a lot of times if you have been following this channel. And the second one, which is very recent for me, is Playwright. Now, why Cypress? Because it's easy. I mean, you can find all the benefits. It's syntax is much more like jQuery and you know, it's, it's concise, it's clean. Why Playwright? Because it is more extensible and it's more programmable than Cypress. Just for an instance, Cypress over here does not support Safari yet. And actually, I am not 100% correct when I say Safari. Even Chrome over here, I should rather say WebKit. Playwright does not perform any testing on Safari. It performs testing on a WebKit browser engine, which is like the underlying engine used by Safari. Similarly, Playwright does not perform testing on Chrome by default it uses Chromium and so does Cypress. So these two tools over here, they would help you to write these particular scripts, which in most cases would be user journeys, which you can code and then forget. Whenever you are trying to initiate a new user journey, you just write a new piece of code for that file. It will automatically run it in multiple browsers for you 
on the CI server and it will fail your build from going to production if anything is failing. You save a lot of cost and a lot of headache when you catch bugs before they go on production. Now, if you ask me which one should you go for, I would say for anything which is a small to medium sized project, Cypress should be more than enough. But if you're trying to do anything more serious, which involves running your tests in parallel or sharding your test cases, and you do not want to opt in for Cypress dashboard, which is like a requirement right now for running your tests in parallel, then Playwright is probably a much better option. It is much faster. It's much customizable, like I said, but it also comes at a little bit of cost where it, the syntax for these test files are much verbose. But obviously you also have some unique points over here. For example, there is a Playwright recorder. I've not personally used it a lot, but this recorder helps you just do the testing yourself once and the recorder records your steps. It creates a script out of it and all you have to do is just copy paste that script. It's, it's probably much simpler in this case because now you can just tell Playwright what you're doing in a user journey, it'll generate a script for you and that's all you need to run all the tests in every single other browser. But yeah, the point of this video is that end-to-end -end testing is super important for your web apps and if you're not doing it, start doing it now, especially if you run something serious on production and it receives good amount of traffic. You can learn how to integrate an end-to-end -end test pipeline in your deployment pipeline through the Codedams GitHub Actions interactive course. I'm sure you would have seen the launch video, but if you haven't, you can check it out or also check out the GitHub Actions course from the Codedams full stack learning path that is all for this one make sure you leave a like and comment down what do you think about this that's all for this video i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of code Dump's discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching